Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make use of constraint layout in Jetpack Compose. Because yes, that is a thing. We know that from XML. And also, if you don't know constraint layout yet, then I recommend you to learn about that first. So this video won't be about how constraint layout works. It will be about how you can make use of constraint layout in Jetpack Compose. And also, constraint layout is not included by default in Android Studio here. We need to include a dependency to include it. We go to our Gradle folder uh, module app and scroll down to our dependencies. And I'll just paste this here. I'll also put that in the description. And we click on Sync Now and head back to main activity. So we are used to actually using constraint layout in our layout editor where we could comfortably set the constraints using just our mouse and dragging it to wherever we wanted the constraints to be. Now in Compose, this is of course not possible. Instead, we have to define the constraints on our own using code. But luckily, the Google team did a pretty good job here because in my opinion, that is pretty easy to do. We just need to create a so-called constraint set and then assign that to our constraint layout. So constraint set is, well, just a set of constraints. It describes, okay, this button's left goes to the parent left. This um, text top goes to the button's bottom and so on. It just defines all of our constraints that we have in our constraint layout. So let's do that. Let's create a val constraints here and set that equal to new constraint set. And you can see we have such a constra constraint set scope here, which we can use to define our constraints now. For simplicity, I just want to create a green and a red box here to just show you how we can use those two to constrain them to each other. So first, when we have such a constraint set, we need to create the references for each composable we want to constrain in our layout. So. First of all, we have our green box that we want to be able to constrain. So we create a val green box here and set that equal to create ref for. So this function comes from this constraint set scope. And we need to give it an ID that is very similar to XML. We can just give it the ID green box here and then do the same for our red box. Also create ref for and set the ID to red box. So you just do this for every kind of composable you have in your constraint layout. And after that, you can use the constraint function to actually specify the constraints for one of these references we created above here. So we use constraint and here we need to specify the ref. So for example, just our green box first. And then we have a constraint, a constraint scope here in which we can now define, okay, which constraints do we actually have for this green box? So let's say we want to put it into the very top left corner. That means we need to constrain the top of that green border, uh, green box to the top of our parent container. And we need to constrain the start of that green box to the start of our parent container. So all we need to do is we need to say, okay, the top side should be linked to our parent top side. So this top refers to the top constraint of our green box and we link it to our parent top. And we do the same with the start and link it to the parent start. And we can also define the dimensions for our composable here inside of that constraint set. So we can use width and set it to dimension so that comes from constraint layout now. And we have some values we can set that to here. On the one hand, we have a percentage value, which we didn't actually have for um, XML. We can set it to a fixed DP value or wrap content or fill to constraints, which would be equivalent to setting it to zero DP in XML. So I will just set it here to 100 DP wide and I'll assign 100 dp for the height as well. So dimension dot value 100 dp. And let's now also constrain our red box. So we go down here and use another constraint block. Use our red box. And here we want to link the top side to our parent top as well. And let's say to position it 
right next to our green box, we can constrain the start of our red box to our green boxes end. So that would just put this red box right to our um, green box. And then let's just also give this box a width of 100 dp and a height as well. And let's actually try that out. Of course, we just created a constraint set, which is not a constraint layout. To actually make use of that constraint set, we need to create a constraint layout. So we do that down here below that constraint set, and we create a constraint layout. And that now takes this constraint set as a parameter here, so we can just pass constraints here. Let's also pass a modifier to just fill our whole screen. Dot fill max size. And in here we will create our two boxes that will just have a modifier of a background. I'll give this one a green background for a green box, obviously. And now to actually tell this box that this is actually our green box that we created up here, that we created reference for. You remember we gave it an ID, but this box here at the moment doesn't know that it's actually this green box here. So we also somehow need to tell this box, hey, you're the green box. And we can also do that with the modifier. So since we're inside of a constraint layout here, we can make use of layout ID and just assign green box to that. Like this. And then we can simply copy this and paste it for the red box replace the ID with red box and the color with red and then we can launch the app and try it out. And you can see that is exactly what we did here. If we take a look up here and open our emulator then you can see we constrained the top of our green box to the parent top so it sticks to the parent top. We constrained the start to the parent start so it sticks to the left hand of our screen we gave it the dimensions 100 dp times 100 dp and we constrained the red box also to the parent top and the start of the red box to the to the end of our green box so that it sticks to the end side here of our green box and if we for example change this constraint for red box or rather if we add a constraint here for the end side and link it to the parent end that would basically just center the red box between the green box and our parent end. So if you take a look here, you can see that's exactly what happens. If we would like to fill up the space between the green box and the parent end, then we would need to use the equivalent of 0dp. So we go to our red box, go to width because it should expand its width. And instead of setting it to dimension dot value, we set it to dimension dot fill to constraints and if we now relaunch this you can now see it fills the whole side or the, the whole space between our green box and our parent. Now let's say you want to create a chain in your constraint layout that is also super simple here in Compose. For that we first want to reset that to value 100 dp to actually see what we do here with the chain and to create a chain we need to go outside of this constraint block and call create horizontal chain or create vertical chain. We want to create a horizontal chain here and here you can see we have the option to just enter all of our constraint layout references that we want to include in that chain. So just all the references we created up here or just all those we want to use the chain for. So for in our case here just green box and red box and when we now launch the app then you can see that is exactly what happens. We, cre we created a chain. We can also change the chain style by using the third parameter here, chain style. Set that to chain style dot packed, for example. And then these items will just be put together in the center. As you can see. And we can also actually use guidelines here in this constraint layout and also barriers, which I won't show you in this video, but it all works in a similar way um, but let's quickly go through the guidelines we can as well just create 
such an anchor here, so that's how it's called, um, this or this, because we can constrain something to anchors. We can create our guideline here, and we can just call create. You can see we have tons of functions here to create a guideline. In the end, let's just create one from top, and then we can either enter an amount of dp here, we want to offset that guideline, or we can enter a fraction. And we'll just use a fraction, which is 0.5f here, so 50% from the top. And then uh, let's just constrain our green box to that. So instead of constraining the top to the parent top, we can now use our guideline. And then also remove this part, because the guideline, of course, does not have a top or bottom side. It's just a line. So if we now relaunch this and check here, you can see now our red box stays where it is and our green box is now constrained to the invisible guideline here that is at 50% and the top side of our green box is constrained to this guideline. And that is everything I wanted to show you here in this video. You should prefer rows and columns here in Compose when it comes to rather simple layouts. In XML we should always use constraint layout because there it was a significant performance issue when we had deep layout hierarchies, but in Compose this doesn't really matter, it's efficient either way. But if you have some more complex layouts in Compose, then constraint layout can really be a great help here, but you can see for, some, for such simple things here, you might rather use rows and columns because then you're just much faster. So I hope you liked this video, if so please give me a like, leave me a comment below and also if you have any questions just put them down here and we can help each other. Thanks for watching, I wish you a nice day, see you in the next video, bye bye.